Long before competitive shooters on consoles were commonplace, gamers who wanted to prove something had to do it on the PC, and the place to do it was tribes. Gunfights are nothing like they were in Call of Duty 4. They were epic duels, with players launching rockets at each other and flying through the air with jetpacks. Timegate Section 8 is a callback to those days, putting everyone in mechanized suits and slamming them together in an online arena. Is it a nostalgic treat, or should the past have remained the past? Section 8 isn't your typical first-person shooter. Players are engaged in massive duels, shrugging off rocket fire and taking grenades as though they're nothing. The combatants are waging war in powerful suits of armor, which allow them to charge forward at enhanced speeds with overdrive mode, leap large distances with jetpacks, sustain incredible damage with their shields, and drop onto the planet's surface from far beyond the atmosphere. Burning in, as the game calls it, is how everyone enters combat, and it's possible to choose any portion of the map to drop into. Once on a freefall, a tap of the brake can slow the descent, and allows for even more tweaking to pick a starting location. This is balanced out by anti-air turrets, which slice up the map to make sure an entire team can't simply drop onto an enemy's base. That said, if someone was to enter the base and destroy the anti-air towers, they could do just that. It's also possible to place more of them with the game's purchasing system, which allows players to earn money through successful play to spend on turrets and vehicles. The actual mechanics of the shooter will likely be different than most people are used to, since it's a far cry from a typical run and gun. Players might be turned off by the lack of one-hit kills, even when an enemy is shot with a sniper rifle or a rocket. It takes a lot to finish someone off in Section 8, and the only way to kill a player without counting them with bullets is to land on them from outer space, which is about as hard as it sounds. Different loadouts, which are entirely customizable, add much-needed flavor to the mix, allowing players to choose which weapons and abilities they take into battle. Multiplayer-focused shooters usually ignore single-player entirely, which made it a pleasant surprise to see that Section 8 actually included a story, with little cinematic cutscenes in between sections. The actual narrative is called Cord's Story, and follows Alex Cord of the 8th Armored Infantry as he attempts to fight the Arm of Orion's forces off of different military bases. The actual missions are a series of objectives like the ones found online, and usually involve Cord running into a base and hacking a computer, or defending another base against a similar attack. It's fairly difficult to actually lose any of these missions, since Alex can always respawn if he dies, resuming combat right where he left it. Cord's story only takes a few hours to complete, but should serve as a good training ground for players interested in the competitive multiplayer scene. The real meat and potatoes in Section 8 comes from the multiplayer, which can be played with up to 32 players. All the game's mechanics were built around the online gaming portion, meaning it's not likely worth picking up the game for anyone who would prefer to tango alone. Instead of picking one game mode per map and sticking to it, Section 8 follows Killzone 2 and has objectives coming and going dynamically. Section 8 actually takes it one step further, and has multiple missions going on at once, meaning one team can be protecting a VIP while another is trying to deliver a bomb to a base. Capturing bases and killing enemies still earns points for the team, so it's important to continue playing normally when objectives aren't active. When they're completed, however, they earn massive points for the winning team, meaning coordination is important to success in Section 8. Far from a pretty game, Section 8 doesn't try to win any awards for its looks. Running on Epic's Unreal 3 engine, Timegate's shooter might actually have more texture pop-ins than any other game this generation. It doesn't help that every character spawn has them dropping from 3,000 feet up, but it's extremely noticeable. Even once they're fully displayed, the textures don't really look all that great and it's very clear that the developers were worried more about the large scale than the small. Luckily, this gamble worked out in their favor, since the frame rate holds together even during large combat sequences. It's a shame that so many other high-profile shooters are coming out this year, because Section 8 would have had a chance to shine in a less populated season. As it stands, it's going to be hard to find a huge audience for this title, especially with a new Call of Duty and Halo just over the horizon. Even so, Timegate's shooter is a well-put-together experience that should make Tribes fans giddy, and remind all of us of a time, for better or worse, when shooters were a bit bigger. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the full text review on GameRevision.com.